Computer malware wants to run and execute undetected. It wants to evade antivirus or AV and EDR, endpoint detection response programs. And we've showcased in a lot of different videos how you can circumvent that. But we haven't talked about how malware might be able to get around one of the toughest places to hide, computer memory. So for the demonstration in this video, our goal is not to bypass antivirus. And for that reason, I have Windows Defender actually turned off. Real-time protection is toggled off. And we can talk more about that soon, but let's just say that our objective, our goal, what we want to do is run some malicious tooling, some offensive software like Mimikatz as an example. Now, of course, we do have Defender turned off, so I can just run Mimikatz.exe and fire stuff up. You might be familiar with Mimikatz, right? Right? It's that tool and utility that can extract and retrieve passwords or credentials out of memory on a Windows computer. Maybe it can steal some password hashes or even sometimes the plain text password themselves. But now say you're a hacker or a red teamer or penetration tester, whatever offensive security, usually you want to get an implant or a beacon running on your target or victim computer. Now that just won't be Mimi Cats on its own, but it's some capability to run whatever you want. The way that that is often done is by embedding or injecting, really, malicious payloads inside of your tooling. And we've seen that time and time again with shellcode, trying to embed or have a shellcode runner that will inject and run and execute that shellcode. But in this case, we don't want to run just shellcode, we want to run a whole binary, a whole other program or executable, like Mimikatz as an example, to do whatever damage we might do. Most times, in offensive security, it's not as easy as just running Mimikatz.exe outright, or whatever offensive tooling you want. You'll usually have to wrap it in sort of a harness, some implant, that beacon that can fire it up for you and embed or inject the payload. So that is exactly what we can do here. I know this is kind of weird, but let's use some tooling to be able to run an executable or a PE file, that portable executable file for Windows, and actually embed it, execute it, and inject it from another harness. Our local PE exec, we could run or inject and embed whatever executable we want. In this case, we'll do it with the PE for mimikatz.exe. Now we could fire up mimikatz through the executable, through our harness. But the way that that is done could be a little suspicious, especially if as a red teamer, you know that you're up against blue teamers or cyber defenders, digital forensics practitioners or incident response folks or security operations center watch floor analysts or malware reverse engineers, you can probably get detected because we'll see that activity in memory. Again, bear in mind, we're taking antivirus out of the equation, so it's okay to have this malicious payload on disk, but say that, hey, we were able to fire up the process hacker and really dig into, okay, what is this new running executable, this binary, the implant, the beacon, our local PE exec? You can see the process ID here is 11204. So let me fire up another terminal and I can run some tools. Say I'm one of the blue team analysts or the cyber defenders right now, and I were to use some tools like Moneta or PECV, and I tried to go see what is that suspicious binary that's running on this device. I'll fire up Moneta, I'll specify, hey, I wanna look for any indicators of compromise in memory, and I'll pass in the process ID 11204 or just as we noted earlier. Take a look. Moneta can fire this up here and it'll say, look, that binary looks pretty suspicious. It's doing some odd things in memory. It's got some abnormal private executable memory or read an executable, like it's going to execute shellcode or some other unknown software, instructions and procedures here, and it's an unsigned module. So, okay, a little sketch. Or perhaps I fired up another tool like PEC, and maybe I looked for, oh, some introspection in the data sections, maybe I looked for some reflective activity, or maybe some import address table tampering, maybe some shell code in the mix, maybe some threads being executed and ran, all on that process ID for 11204. Do we find anything suspicious after we scan all this data? Yep. Okay, digging through a whole lot of stuff here, looks like there is some sketchy stuff going on, and I would clarify, I'd decree, this binary is suspicious. And remember, antivirus, EDR, or whatever, we're taking that out of the equation. This is all detected just by signatures, just by bad, known malicious stuff happening inside of memory. Now, finally, enough setting the stage, how can we get our implant, our beacon, whatever, our malware to hide in memory? We're gonna dig into that in 
In this video, we're gonna showcase some crazy cool technique and a demo and everything, but honestly, look, this is everything that I've been able to learn, all thanks to the sponsor of today's video that I think you really gotta check out, Maldev Academy. Brought to you by the renowned security researchers, Mr. Docs and Null, join a comprehensive and module-based malware development course that provides fundamental to advanced level training. Write your own implants, beacons, and malware with modern 64-bit architecture. Perfect for offensive security specialists or even beginners with no prior experience in malware development. With over 100 text-based modules, all with downloadable files and code, and a vibrant Discord community, you learn so much. Between process injection, compile time API hashing, anti-debugging techniques, sandbox detection, and so, so much more. You're provided a virtual machine that includes all the pre-built tools and code ready for you. And of course, upon completion, you get that fancy certificate that proves all the awesome stuff that you've learned. With Maldev Academy, you can choose any plan for access to the material, or jump into lifetime access and get all the new updates. Both Mr. Docs and Null are always sharing new research, between low bins or other tradecraft, and with Maldev Academy, you can truly become a professional malware developer. Dive into the Academy with my link below in the video description, jh.live slash maldevacademy. For a limited time, you can use my code HAMMOND10 for 10% off. Huge thanks to Maldev Academy for sponsoring this video. This is one of the latest updates from Malware Academy and the releases. This is all on PE fluctuation, or really cool technique how we could hide our malicious payload in memory. Against those tools like Moneta or PEC, this all discusses how we could get around, hey, maybe just that local PE injection that we did just a moment ago, but actually implementing memory evasion strategies so it doesn't get detected. Now, bear in mind, this does require a little bit bit of preliminary knowledge. Everything that we get to dig into, the C programming language source code that we get to cut up, all that tradecraft is covered in a previous local PE injection module as part of Maldev Academy. And truthfully, that is pretty worthwhile to dig into before we get to all the fireworks in this section. Now, with that said, I still want to showcase all the cool stuff. I want to let off the fireworks. I want to do the demo here, but I got to be straight up. I'm not going to be hand jamming every single line of code for this whole process because look, you can dig into it as part of Maldive Academy, link in the video description. Oh, and uh, please don't hate me for that, by the way. Seriously, if you take a look at update six from Maldive Academy, this stuff is pretty insane. Like if you dig into that local PE injection module, I don't know if you can see my vertical scroll bar way over on the right hand side, but there is a whole lot to this module. And that's not something that I would realistically be able to cover inside of a little compressed YouTube video. It is super good material for your learning though. I really recommend, hey, you dig through it, cut up some of that code. I I would, however, like to chat a little bit about the concepts just so I can explain this to you and we get that understanding across here. Because look, memory scanners, those tools like Moneta or PEC that we got to dig into are gonna end up looking for signatures or specific sort of fingerprints, some telltale signs that something is suspicious or out of the ordinary. Like, hey, maybe some memory that was actually marked as readable and executable. And that, hey, we're gonna fire off shell code or run new process instructions as this part of the code. We saw that just a moment ago, and obviously it's pretty sketch. Maldiv Academy offers a really good example here, like when we start to build out payloads and tooling with like MSF Venom, that Metasploit framework tooling that will just build out whatever shell code or I don't know, anything that you want here. It usually always has a static amount of bytes or well-known, easily signatured and definitive data inside of its output. Now you might already know how we usually get around that, how we circumvent, oh, those signatures or those things easily identifiable for antivirus engines or EDR, typically we would encrypt and maybe obfuscate or encode the malicious payload that's injected or embedded in our harness, our beacon in our agent, right? But the problem is when we actually wanna detonate or run and execute our malicious payload, it needs to be unraveled and decrypted or decoded so that it can run as it's plain text bytes. That means it's really hard to hide from memory scanners because it has to be in its original malicious form. That is the restriction, that is the limitation, and that is why it's so hard to hide malware within memory. 
but maybe there's some cool, clever idea that we might be able to work within those rules. This is the idea behind this PE fluctuation technique. Say that we were using some of the offensive tools like mimikatz.exe as an example. The thing is, it could remain dormant in memory. It won't actually do anything until we actually tell it what to do. You provide user input or a command that you want to run to interact and actually execute capabilities of mimikatz or whatever. So what if we actually would encrypt the executable in memory when it's not actively doing anything, when it's waiting for instructions or a new command and user input to be provided? What if we would only decrypt the malicious payload in memory for just the very few seconds, for the couple moments where it needs to execute some operation, but then just get bundled back up and encrypted in memory once again? That way, those defensive detection tools like PEC and Minetto have a very, very slim window of opportunity to actually even see some of the malicious operations. This whole idea to sort of flip flop between an encrypted versus decrypted state within memory for a whole portable executable, a whole binary and exe file itself is actually based off of another pretty well-known tool for shell code fluctuation. This was put together some years ago by uh, Marius. Uh, I actually got to meet him at ZeefCon, super cool dude. And that's kind of the great idea. They're using this for shell code, but Maldiv Academy has expanded this further to use it for a whole binary. And hey, I think this is kind of cool. It's just nice to see, you know, credit where credit is due. Everyone kind of patting each other on the back. This is all great kudos and research for the other folks that still got to put together some ideas like this. We are always genuinely standing on the shoulders of giants for our industry. So bear that in mind here. But let me tell you that whole idea sort of fluctuating back and forth, flip flop between, hey, read only memory or readable and executable memory encrypted versus decrypted is used in a lot of offensive tooling. In fact, uh, Cobalt Strike Sleep Kit. Now to actually implement this, we have to use some special Win32 API functions. They showcase using Create Timer Q Timer, which is a hysterical name, but ultimately it ends up setting something on a schedule, like sort of the at command or a scheduled task that says, hey, you know what? After five seconds, that's when I want you to run this function or call back and execute this snippet of code. They set up this timer with an encryption and decryption routine with RC4 and all the crypto math thematic magic to hide it in memory, but it actually needs a little bit of guardrails surrounding it. It needs something to protect it when, hey, maybe the binary or application tried to go work with that memory, but it was in that read-only state and it couldn't execute things out of it. For that reason, they add a vectored exception handler or a VEH and it puts all together with these Win32 API functions. But you know what? Hey, that's a lot of talk. Let's dive into the code. Inside of the Maldiv Academy virtual machine, I have downloaded the code for that module so we could go ahead and extract it and play with it. And I'll go ahead and open up the Visual Studio Code project for this PE fluctuation technique. All right, take a look. Hey, we have this big C source code file in the main.c of the PE fluctuation project. And let me scroll all the way down to get to the main function so we can kind of dig into each of the pieces here. Here you can see we define a couple variables, but ultimately the first thing that we do is read this file name from disk. That is our PE file or the portable executable, the exe file in the binary that we want to run. We read that from disk and if we go track it down, that is of course our Mimi cats.exe. Now remember, we're leaving Mimi cats on disk because we aren't trying to evade antivirus right now. That's why we've left Windows Defender actually off, real-time protection disabled. But I will say, if you really wanted to, if you want to dig into maybe some a little bit more tradecraft, you could probably like pre-encrypt the binary or the executable file, maybe just store all the bytes that you want inside of some code here, and you could use that rather than pulling it from disk. If it's encrypted but embedded, it'll still be hidden pretty well. The these are some notes that my editor put together while he was going through this, and big thanks to Nord Garen for all his help kind of preparing this video and everything. I will leave that as an exercise for you if you would like to pre-encrypt the binary that you want to run and have it all in one standalone embedded file. Let's get back to our main function though, because the next thing that we do is actually initialize a whole struct for this portable executable, for the mimikatz.exe binary that we want to run. We end up pulling in all the data so that we can play with it, fix the import address table, have some other conveniences convenience functions all set up here for us. And once things are set, we can inject our local portable executable. This uses probably some of the same functions that you might already be familiar with, virtual alloc to create some memory for it. Hey, where are we gonna put that binary? Resolve the imports, 
locations and everything that we need for the binary to run. But don't forget, here's one of the most important parts. We need to have this vectored exception handler so that it will be able to have guardrails in case, oh, the binary ends up maybe working with that memory that isn't ready yet. We haven't decrypted it in memory and maybe it could cause an exception. That's okay, we just need to handle it. And following that, remember that we need to put together these timer queues, things that will end up staging and having callbacks for the RC4 encrypt or decrypt functionality that will mask or unmask this in memory. Once the executable is injected, we just let it run. We wait for single object and let it rip. Now, look, I'm gonna zoom out here because you can see there is a lot of code, like 500 lines or so, almost 600. And let me say, sure, this is an advanced technique. We make a couple changes to some of the code that was written in the local PE injection from the other update six module 2930, whatever. But the best thing about Maldiv Academy is that it gives you all this code functioning, working, and you can dig through it and maybe learn something new. Piece this together on your own and we can see the fireworks in action. So with that said, let's finally do it. Let me go ahead and toggle this into release mode and go ahead and build it. Click in this button here or control shift B on the keyboard. And this will put together everything that we need for that PE fluctuation technique. Here's our binary. We'll just go ahead and execute it. Let's stage everything just as we had before. I'll open up an administrator command prompt and we'll go ahead and fire this up. I full screen the command prompt and moved into the directory where we have our pefluctuation.exe, but we do need to have Mimi cats in here because if you remember, here I'll clear the screen and try and run our executable here. It does need that Mimi cats.exe in the current directory. I will jump to my desktop, grab the Mimi cats binary, and I'll go ahead and copy and paste that back in our directory here. Slap that in, now that should be good. Let's run PE fluctuation one more time, and there we go. You can see the whole technique here. It's going to end up pulling everything that we need for the binary, setting the memory permissions, performing PE fluctuation, and getting Mimi Cats to run. Now remember, this is just sitting in memory in an encrypted state until we try to enter anything, until we input whatever commands here. If I just hit enter, you can see it's gonna get this exception raised, all thanks to the guardrails, that vector exception handler. But if I were to run any of the commands, like, oh, help, what can I see, what can I do? There's another exception, but it comes back to me and gives me everything that we need to do stuff with Mimi Cats. Here, I'll go ahead and run that coffee command, so we get our cutesy little ASCII art here. Proof of concept, it works. And you know what? Let's do some damage. Let me actually use Mimi Cats with a privilege debug. So we grab everything that we need for privileges. Let's do a simple token elevate so we can become system. Look at that. We've impersonated system because we were running from the admin account. Now I can use Secure Elsa and check out the logon passwords and see, hey, what can we pull out of this victim machine? Look at it, all the users, maybe some NTLM hashes that we're able to pull down. Let's see, can I find my Maldev user? Here I am, and there's that LTLM hash I can crack. So that's that. We're running Mimi Cats without an issue, but we need to check. Are we successfully evading some of those memory scanners like PEC Eve or Mineta? So let me scroll down here. Let me get to the very bottom of Mimi Cats. You can see it is still running. I can run coffee, get whatever exceptions I want here, but let's fire up the process hacker one more time and let's go see. If I scroll down, this is our PE fluctuation, our, our malware, right? Now let's open up another command line, run as administrator. I'll bring that to the side here, move in the downloads folder where I have Moneta. And just as we did before, let's run Moneta to look for any indicators of compromise based off the process ID for our P fluctuation 10596, 10596, and take a look. Moneta gets a hit, but it's only because the executable image, this portable executable, our EXE, is unsigned. It doesn't have a certificate because we just built this and made it ourselves. That has nothing to do with Mimi Cats or the memory tricks that we're using. I'll say this is not a finding because we could just as easily, oh, sign this binary, get a certificate, slap it on there, whatever. Our memory techniques, really not getting covered here. Hey, you know what, to cap it off, let's go ahead and run PEC and we'll do all of those extensive tests. We were doing what, data five, looking for reflection. I think that's the argument for that. Uh, IAT for the import address table set to three, looking for shell code, looking for malicious threads. Uh, and that was what, PID 10596. Let's hit enter on that, scanning everything. Total scan 57 here, but, what we saw previously at the very beginning of this video when we didn't have any of these memory evasion techniques, look, 
all those hooks, all those implants, anything looking suspicious? No. Nada. Zilch. We are under the radar. And Mimi Cats is still cooking. Look, we can just fire up our little coffee ask yard again. I don't know, we can list whatever tokens that we want. We can see that we can successfully do whatever we want with our malicious payload, all in memory, and Mimi Cats is running without an issue. Isn't that cool? Like, it's super cool. And I gotta say, look, we haven't even done like the coolest thing that we could do. Like, crack this open in a debugger. I don't know, whatever you want. X64 debug, wind debug, cheat engine or whatever, and try to look at the memory as it's executing, attached to the process, and you might be able to see, ooh, it transforms its memory, encrypts and decrypts, and that's just wild. Flip flop back and forth, Try to hide under the radar, still execute what we need to, but hide from memory scanners. Let our beacon, our implant, and our malware run even under the microscope from memory scanners. I'll be the first to admit, I abstracted out a whole lot of stuff for everything that's going on under the hood here. We didn't cut through each and every line, hand jamming each piece of the C source code. There's so much to this technique and it is marked as maybe a little bit more of a hard or advanced module for Maldiv Academy. But look, you get to learn this and so much more and build up to all this incredible stuff with Maldiv Academy. So seriously, if you haven't, take a look with the link below. They do some incredible stuff and it's just so, so cool. Huge thanks to Mr. Docs, huge thanks to Null, huge thanks to Norgaren and everyone for helping me maybe put together this little showcase. But I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something and I hope you go play with Maldiv Academy. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, do those YouTube algorithm stuff, and I'll see you in the next video.